Greetings, Daniel Persetto for Adobe Photoshop Creative Cloud Edition, and we're looking at 3D printing again. And I'm going to get a random model off the internet. I found one at archive3d.net. It's this turtle model here. It should look something like that. And we're going to open it up and see if we can get it ready for print. It's a 3DS file, so sometimes these things are unpredictable. The 3D units dialog comes up. It allows you to, to set the size of your model into the scene. In this case, it wants to be 3600 of something, which in this case was set to inches. We're going to change that to say 4 inches. That's pretty, plenty large for a turtle. And it comes in. So let's, we're in our 3D tool here with the move tool. You can see selected here and it allows me to move in the scene. It's moving the camera. So now you can see it did not come in with this texture, which is quite common when you find files that are free on the internet or free from anywhere that they're not prepped correctly or properly. But we can fix that. So we can either select once, select twice. If you tap on the model twice here or select it twice, it'll prompt you with the materials dialog here. Or you can go through the materials here, tab, in the 3D panel, and it will filter it by each one, filter by mesh, filter by material, or even lights. So we have one material, it is now selected, and I'm gonna say, you know what, let's replace this thing with whatever we can find, which is the concrete material here in the turtle folder. And now it looks more like the model that we were supposed to download. You can see there's not a lot of care in the UV creation on this part, there's some mess up there, but that's okay. We're done, we just downloaded a model, we replaced the texture, and that needed to happen. And now I'm gonna to go to 3D print settings. You can also ac access that via selecting scene and the 3D print button here will appear. We are selecting shape ways. The printer that we're gonna use or the material set really is what we're gonna use is a full color sandstone. We wanna maintain the textures. And this is kind of a preview of what it may look like. It's not repaired yet. This is just giving you previews. Now four inches is the scale I want, and I'm gonna say select surface, normal maps, bumps, and opacity. Now I don't know if this one, I don't think it actually has any, but you know, we can actually do that very quickly. So I'm gonna go back out here, filter by my materials. I'm gonna select my bump map, and I'm just gonna select that texture again. It's gonna repeat that selection of that same texture, and I'm just gonna make this crazy. I'm gonna raise this up here a little bit too crazy, okay somewhere there. So now you are able to replicate that texture here. It's actually the same texture, so if you modify it here, it'll be modified there. But it allows you to quickly just get something there, something interesting, and I just wanted to, to do that to show you. I'm going to turn these off because I'm not going to put anything there. It's a little more complicated than I wanted, but let's say low for now to make this faster. And this little icon here says start print. You can also, in the 3D menu, say 3D print and it will begin the repairing process for the model. It'll unify the textures into one material if necessary. It'll look for any holes or, or any gaps and just make sure that model is watertight, ready to go to the printer so that when you send it off to Shapeways, all they have to do is print it. Now Shapeways will do a spot check as well to make sure this model is printable and acceptable for, the, for their printers. Okay, so we're done. And that process can take, you know, anything from 30 seconds to five minutes, depending on the complexity of repairing the mesh. So there we go. We got a nice preview of what our mesh may look like. Or it will probably look very close to that from the test that we have. Now this is the price, $167. That is the amount of materials, and that's a solid object. So that's about right. We could probably print it in some other plastic or, or um, material that would be cheaper, but in this case, we're just gonna use this for demonstration. And I'm gonna say, export this file. Just give me a file that I can send to Shapeways that will send to their printer. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it on my desktop. And that's a vermal file that it exports. That's what the Z-Corp printers use. And we zip it up with the material so that you don't have to worry about it. And all you have to do is complete the ordering process. You must upload your file to Shapeways. Yes, let's go there now. And I'm gonna select my file. We're taking it to this nice page. Here it is, the zip file, the turtle, the WRL, which is vermal.zip, has our texture and model. And I'm gonna say upload. And here we go. Our model is now uploaded to Shapeways. And Shapeways will now look at the model and make estimations, which should be 
the final estimates for the pricing on your model on what materials you choose. And it will give you a few more materials to choose from. And that's it. That's all you have to do from Photoshop to Shapeways. Which, you know, I did clean up the model a little bit. I, I put the texture on. But you could just go one, two, three, and then you're there. And I just wanted to point that out. So there's a list of the models. It created a nice thumbnail generation of the, the turtle. And all you have to do now is just say, you know, order it. And that's it. That's how you get from Photoshop to Shapeways. If you have any questions, please leave comments. Or you can even email me at Daniel at Adobe, and I'll try to answer them as quickly as I can. Thank you for watching.